Hi, everybody. Welcome to Habitat Now. I'm your host, Aaron Shea, and thank you for joining me for this wonderful experience, experimental Zoom. We're going to take you uh, via plane, train, automobile to the Fort Wayne Museum of Art in Fort Wayne, Indiana, as we visit the exhibition there featuring artist Lachazar Boyajev titled Movement. Uh, it's an amazing museum. If you have not been to this facility, I recommend it to you highly. It's one of the one of the museums on the forefront of releasing glass to the public and getting people to care about the medium. It is an honor to have you both, and I'll introduce you both in a little bit. I'm going to mute everybody, so Charles and Latches are feel free to unmute yourself. And I am going to start by going through a little housekeeping and show you what's going on here at the gallery. I hope you all can see my screen over here. I'm pretty sure you can. So, um, oh, my PowerPoint just completely kicked out. That's hilarious. Let me try it again. All right. End of slideshow. Oh, it must be at the very end. <laughs> it happens. Here we go. All right. So the 50th is coming up, which is our big celebration in September, and you're all invited. I highly recommend you uh, plan a trip to visit us uh, during our September event. We're celebrating 50 years of the gallery. There's a whole bunch of events you've probably read about in one month, multiple emails. Most recently, the speakers are going to be um, Richard Royal, Richard Whiteley, and John Littleton Kate Vogel a demonstration by Richard Jolly. And there will also be a talk with Ferd talking about the history of the gallery and parties and a visit to the Flip Museum for our very first scavenger hunt. It'll be an amazing time. You're definitely invited. Please plan on being there. If you haven't received your formal invitation, please uh, send me a message and I'll send, that, send you out one. It's a great time. Many of you have been to these things before. It's, it's a different version of it because we're celebrating 50th versus our national, but it's very similar in process. The grand opening of the vault will happen that weekend, our back room. People have been trickling in there, seeing what's going on. Um, if you have anything you want to add to the vault for resale, feel free to contact me. Uh, the Glass Art Fair will also be opening in September. This is a virtual exhibition that we're partnering with to get artists' artwork in front of people via the cloud. And we did this last year. It was very successful. And uh, it, it continues, and we have a, some, a taste of some treasures there. Oh, I heard also Emily Brock is coming this year for the 50th. So it'll be great to see her. We haven't seen her in a few years. Um, John Miller's show up at the Flint Museum of Art, Institute of Art will be up on display. We'll be visiting that. And in September, in September we're gonna be visiting again virtually, just like this with Steve Lynn and Charles Shepard during our event for his exhibition opening up. All right, all aside, I want to welcome uh, Charles and Latches Art. Please guys, say hello at your own, in your own idiom. Hi, great to see everybody, this is Charles. And hi, it's La Cesar, and uh, glad you're joining us today. It's great to have you both. They're both uh, from California and Indiana, from the other side of the world. It's great we can get together like this. So, Charles, why don't you give us a little uh, background on the museum in general and just the glass focus? I'm going to stop sharing while we do this so we can see each other's faces. Okay, let me, let me uh, tell everybody that uh, we're back to having what we call the Summer of Glass, which we did five or six years in a row, and then we took a two-year break. Summer of Glass means it's, it's kind of a three-ring circus. We have a group show, we have a solo show, and we have, in this case, a show of new gifts to the museum. So there's three shows under one banner. It's, it's a great, great grouping. Lachazar and I have been working on his show for quite some time, obviously interrupted like everything was by COVID and other kinds of things, yeah. but we made it happen. And it was, it was wonderful working with him and wonderful getting this show put in. I can't wait for you to see the pictures. I also will tell you that we're celebrating at the same time the gift of the Fendel slash Rosenbach collection, 32 pieces of fabulous top name uh, museum pieces, wonderful glass. Uh, Miss, Miss, Mrs. Fendel has passed her estate, left us the gift uh, with her daughter steering it toward us. Uh, she was a Manhattan resident, also Boca Raton. We had to go to both places to retrieve glass, but it was well worth the effort. And uh, I, I urge you to come online and take a look at it. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. That's fantastic. Um... It's, it's amazing to see this collection grow and grow it does. I know you're planning an expansion in the future and there's all kinds of things we can talk about. And uh, well, I'm eager to jump into this talk. So let's go with Lachazar. Tell us a little bit about your exhibition that you put together at the museum. Yeah, we've talked with Charles for a while, a few years back uh, about 
putting the show together and we had different ideas and I went to visit the museum just to see how it looks and what uh, galleries they have. And I was so impressed. It's a wonderful museum. I, I didn't expect that actually, to tell you the <laughs> truth. Uh, it was one year after Sofa, uh, I, I rented a car and I drove all the way there. And I was so impressed and so excited that uh, we'll have a show there. So we started talking about it. And uh, unfortunately, our, you know, like everything else, uh, COVID came. It was supposed to be actually last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, it got interrupted, of course. Everything got postponed, closed, so couldn't travel anywhere. So it just a delay. But uh, finally, we made it happen. And... Uh, I'm so excited. I, I just went there, uh, when was that, 10 days ago or so, uh, help, just wanted to see how it is. Uh, they, by the way, they have a great uh, way of uh, displaying the work uh, and lighting it too. Mm -hmm. I was thinking that I'll be going up and, you know, <laughs> twinkling the lights here and there, but it was so well done already. I thought I'll be working. I had a day and a half uh, there, and I was supposed to be installing the work, as they say, but uh, I arrived and everything was installed and in good order, very well organized. Then the next day I was supposed to go in the morning and uh, help with the lighting. And I come in the morning and the lighting was all done. And I said, <laughs> what am I going to do now? <laughs> so uh, a great crew of people there, really very nice and helpful and very professional. So I'm very pleased with the result. And uh, the way uh, I decided to do this show was uh, showing uh, four different ways of uh, approaching the work. Uh, one was uh, in the beginning of the... Um, when you enter the gallery, uh, it is a group of work that is very unique. I never done anything like that. Uh, it was, I designed everything. Uh, I learned how to do 3D modeling on a computer using Maya software, uh, which was so challenging. I had a very hard time, but I, I did a, what was seven pieces. Uh, and uh, they were all done on a computer. I designed everything on a computer. There was... Uh, then it was all CNC machine, was uh, the original done in uh, foam. And then the foam, from the foam was taken the molds and cast and polished. Uh, they were, it was all done in Czech Republic. So it was a different uh, uh, way of, and they're all unique. They're like, I think five pieces left. Uh, and uh, that's one of the aspects. Uh, some uh, of the other are more uh, abstract pieces that I've done with the regular uh, modeling with clay and uh, my regular work. And uh, there is two or three uh, torsos, female torsos that I have there. And uh, that's another aspect of my work. And then the last thing was the monumental work, the, the big piece that it's... Uh, about 400 kilos, so it's about 800 pounds or so. It's really heavy and uh, very, very well received and very well lit in the middle of the room. So it has its presence. So I'm truly thankful and very happy to have my actually first uh, museum show ever. It's great, so, Lachazar. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, Char Charles, you. add a little bit to how the show has been received, will you? Before we start playing this video? I'll tell you, um, by, by way of starting, let me say that uh, my team is very competitive with your team of Rob and Dave. <laughs> so all my tech people wanted to impress Lachazar that they would handle his work as professionally and as as wonderfully as, as the Habitat team does. Uh, so they, they didn't want to let him come in and be disappointed in any way. Mm -hmm. So they worked double time to get this done. We put uh, five, a total of five people on the on the job to get Lachazar's things in, uh, and I forgot to ask Lachazar how heavy that big piece was. I thought he said two hundred pounds. <laughs> He's, I think he said eight hundred pounds. So that was a little that was a little tricky, but we were able to manage that with our team of five and a little extra 
lift help from a hydraulic hoist. Uh, mm -hmm. It was it was wonderful going in. The, the camaraderie was high. The uh, the love of Lachazar's work. And see, we already have Lachazar's work in the collection too. So er everybody on the team knew it, and they just had not seen as big a pieces as he sent us this time. So it was a, it was a great sense of camaraderie and excitement about working with an artist that they wanted to work with. So we got at it, we got everything done. Uh, on Saturday, this all happened between Monday and Friday and on Saturday it opened to the public and the public went wild. Mm. And in, in fact, actually it was a little pre-party little, little pre on Friday night for uh, Mrs. Fendel's daughter, Allison Breyer, who came from Manhattan with her husband to take a peek at her mom's things. And they went crazy over Lachazar's show. So I let them know that if they wanted to buy an extra piece or two, <laughs> you know, you probably could work that out. <laughs> here, uh, here to help. <laughs> so so it, was, it was wonderful to get it done. And, and the Friday night, you know, little pre-party was a great way for us to get ready to, to share with the public on Saturday. And everything was buffed up wonderfully. And we had a lot of visitors. Yeah. Uh, you know, museums, I think, have fared a little bit better than a lot of uh, businesses and enterprises during the COVID time. Because even though we see about 150,000 people a year, we only see big groups of people when we're doing special events. So our traffic has been high all spring and summer. And we were open very, very early in the spring, uh, you know, masking and all the sensitive things. But people, as we all know, we all want to get out of the house and go see something great. And so whether you came for the glass, which many, many, many people did, or whether you came in and were surprised by the glass, people were thrilled about this. And the traffic has not slowed down at all. That's amazing. I did like your tagline there. I'm going to steal too. Get out of your house and go see something great. And put that in the notes too. For everybody yeah. too, because it's a true, you know, we got to experience life and this is the time to do it. All right, let's get into the, the nitty gritty here. So we're going to be showing this video. There is no audio. So we can have a dialogue over this and we'll be kind of walked through by Charles and by Lachazar as we proceed. So let's open the door and walk on in. I believe it's muted now. Okay. So it should be playing right now as we're slowly getting into the show. And this is the welcome wall, right? The welcome wall. We, we, we have very big walls uh, of various different lengths, and they're all about two and a half, three feet thick, but they, they have a system underneath them. I can move them around. So we use this wall right at the front entrance. The glass doors part when they sense your presence, and you'd be looking at this with a sculpture to the left that's just out of sight. And I use it as sort of a teaser because I don't want you to be able to see the whole show first, but look to your right and see these beautiful two pieces that we can see on our screens. Lachazar, tell us a, a little bit about both those pieces. Well, those pieces on the right, uh, uh, the first one that you see, which is behind you uh, and as a background, it's called Freedom. And uh, it was done uh, to like um, 2015, I believe, 14, 15, which was, uh, uh, we did record a video, which is called Movement in Glass. And uh, this piece was actually uh, the one that uh, it shows how it's all made the whole process. My thought from, you know, first uh, drawing and sculpting and casting and then grinding, polishing, and at the end, photographing. Um, I do all of those things uh, myself. So uh, that was the piece that was in the video. Uh, I did two pieces, one in uh, red, that it's right behind you, and the other one is in blue, and it was salt, and it's in Israel right now, overlooking the sea, somewhere in a beautiful setting. <clears throat> And the other one is uh, uh, a female a torso. Uh, it's a group of uh, torsos that I've done uh, in larger scale. I have some smaller pieces as well, but this one is one of the larger pieces that I have done, uh, about three feet tall. Um, it's uh, 
beautiful piece that I really love. It is so, a stunning, stunning work. My piece is very similar in red. And, yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's in the same series work. that I've done. So Charles, tell us about what this is. Let me zip back to it. A walk in the atrium down to the gallery and, and everybody will recognize Martin's work here, Martin Blank. Uh, this was a piece commissioned for a grand building in Chicago that got sold and the piece got hidden in the basement. Hmm. And it took me with Aaron's help six months to find somebody to talk to about it. And eventually it came to the museum as a permanent gift. That's fantastic. And, Martin... and of course, Mar Martin came and installed it. Mm -hmm. And here's the, here's the gallery doorway. The glass doors were apart. Very nice. We're now in, we were now in the museum with you. This is a nice personal tour. I love it. <laughs> and right. this text is going to tell everybody what they're going to be seeing. Here are some of the individual pieces. Beautiful color. These are the pieces that uh, I designed with a computer and it's all done in a different way than all the rest of my work. So these are the experimental one of a kind pieces, the yellow, the blue, and the other one that you're seeing. Right there. What a purity to the, to the glass. Yeah, it's also the same on the right side. And, and our staff member doing the video is trying to get us as intimate access as she can. Yeah, this is great. Oh yeah, the white pieces. Oh. Beautiful. That, I, I like how you painted the wall dark, very nice. <laughs> we, we don't often do this, but right. we, we thought it's exactly what Latches are wanted and we exactly. had to do it for these two pieces. Yeah, I appreciate that because it shows better the texture and the mm -hmm. glass because it's white and uh, it has some translucency and some transparency as well, as well as this uh, piece that it's lit uh, from the base, uh, base is stainless steel. And uh, it's a great piece, but it needed exactly background like that to show the piece. So right. it's great. Yeah. In a in natural home, you know, usually windows or other types of backgrounds, not just sitting there on a white wall. So it's good to have a little bit of texture like that. And then we're diving into what now? A love of light. And, and this, this is a little sneak peek at the uh, Fendel Rosenbach collection, a Robin Grebe right in the front. as another larger Grebe in the collection. Wow, a full that's... figure standing. I love that work. I have it. <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, this is um little Chihuly. Who is this? This is Schwartz. Is that who that is? Yes. Very cool. So these were these were gifts from the collection or these acquisitions? These are these are uh, gifts for, from the Fendel, Fendel family to the collection, and we were delighted to get one of Lachazar's work in this collection. That's great. Which was terrific. This and is a, a big back. Back there, a tall Robin Grebe. Yeah, I, I love going around this because I love to see the names and people try. And this is a beautiful piece too. I love her work. I talked to her recently, trying to get her to do something for us. Back in the well, studio. You know, it's funny because we called her too because we wanted her to know that she was in the collection. Yeah. The, the little offering she has. Uh, step piece by Mark Pizer, some of my favorites. These are great. Very subtle. Very historic works. 32 different pieces in the collection all came to the museum. And these are all up now, right? On display. These are all up now. Hey, there's there's Lachazar. Lachazar right there. there you are, buddy. Looking good. Your photographer did a great job. Well, because of our, I, I, I probably the room doesn't know, but I was telling uh, Lachazar and Aaron, our computer systems got hacked with ransomware and have been offline for four weeks. So we had to shoot this with a phone. Very cool. Technology is great, isn't it? These are another, these are acquisitions from different people. Right. I recognize that claim and that came from somewhere. Oh, same with that one. That piece is called Winter by Pava Lava. That's, right there. <clears throat> That's a lot of fun. 
So how long does it take you guys to set up a show like this? Uh, we usually work in Monday through Monday, you tear down a show. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you put in the new show. And on Friday, you do your label and your lighting. Gotcha. And we okay. spend an entire day lighting. Uh, my head technician, Brian Williamson, uh, who Latches are worked with on his show, is really very deft hand. Mm. Oh, Jamie Guerrero. Jaime Guerrero. Very cool. A lot of pieces from Habitat Gallery. Yep. I love seeing the years of purchases from us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's great. Some wonderful pieces for the public to enjoy. I like the vitrines. We still got to get a, oh yeah, the new Paul Stanger piece. That's a beauty. That came from the Belkin collection. It did, yep. New acquisition. <clears throat> it's great to see these on display. It's so, it's so intimate. You have such an intimate experience there for people to explore the material and explore these pieces. Well, that, a thing that challenges us compared to the Habitat Gallery is that we've got to make sure that we're safe enough and the works are far enough apart so that when we have groups of students, for example, mm -hmm. we usually serve about 15,000 students a year and they come in groups of 30 and 40. Right. So you have to make sure that none of them can bump a pedestal. Yeah, and safe and sorry. That, that's why we have a little bit more space in between everything. Wonderful treasures. These are great vitrines you have there too, the toppers. They've come in very handy because the other thing we have to worry about is whether somebody would actually pick a piece up. Mm -hmm. And it's never happened, but if something's too small, we do take the precaution of waxing the glass down and putting the vitrine top on. Now, Latches well, Show was our, the first gallery because we really wanted to make the big impact with his solo show. And it just, it was a, the, people would come down the corridor past the Martin Blank and stop in their tracks, literally, uh, and go, wow, what is in there? And so it, it had the effect that we wanted. They needed to get in here. They felt the need to get in there and see what Latches Are was doing. And he certainly, you know, debuted beautiful works. Yeah, incredible. Now, a confession is that when Latches Art came, I had misinterpreted two pieces and reversed what headed toward, what faced the wall and what faced the room. And I was so embarrassed. And when we turned them around, we realized how much better they were when we did it the way he wanted us to do it. It happens. It's always, it's always uh, I don't think they have a back or front, but sometimes it, changing it, it uh, from some, mm, depends on the location, on the lighting, some they look better, some a little more uh, contrasting and uh, more graphic, more powerful as a, a image on certain places, looking through the flat side of the glass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is still the images of the uh, pieces I designed on a computer. And these, these the first and the last time, there is no more of those because uh, it was so hard to do and so many hours learning how to do it on a computer and then making it and it's all polished. Uh, it was so much work that I said, it's not worth it. I cannot, I cannot do that. Yeah, this is the another female torso that I really love. I love that color. You can see the tone change. The amber color. Yeah. Yeah. It it's changes as you move. And in the back is also uh, ground and polish in different shades. It's not flat. This is the only piece that's not flat in the back from my mm -hmm. regular work. It's uh, decided to do a little more experimenting with that. I'm not sure if it helped a little bit, but uh, has a little more depth into it. I saw your uh, video you were talking about earlier you made of showing your process and you really get an idea why your pieces are usually flat on one side because of the mold making. You're designing yeah. it flat yeah. on a table 
And then when you, when you did the 3D pieces, it was such a hard left turn from what we've seen you do in the past. But it yeah. definitely still feels, feels like your work by yeah. far. And that's, that's one of the last pieces. Backwards. That was when yeah. you had backwards? Well, this is actually from the flats. I, I like to look at from the flats. It's like looking from a window flat and seeing the depth of the piece. Uh, so it has a different qualities. And yes. there you go, the big one, call it brace. And, and that's the one that almost killed us. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Yeah, there were two pieces uh, of that size for, uh, they were destined for the sofa show and uh, the last one that there was. And uh, unfortunately, one of them didn't make it. So it is uh, the same size piece that got broken, right? So it was really difficult to deal with. Uh, fortunately, this one survived. And there's freedom again. Yeah. Great motion. Beautiful piece. Master of casting. You can really feel it. And he does all this himself in his studio. Even photographing myself. So it's all, all me. This is a great. Which is uh, not very easy yeah. to do <laughs> everything by yourself. Uh, it's hard. Of course, you cannot do many pieces because of that. It's really hard. Uh, sometimes but then it's very rewarding that you know that you created the piece from your thought and all the way to finishing it and uh, like into, into, into fruition and now in the public eye which is great charles how long is this show up this show is up till october 3rd aaron okay which will give people good a good long time to see it yeah what a great and, show you know Every, everybody in the room, I think, knows Lachazar and how, how popular he is in a variety of different groups of people. And I have to say, I wasn't expecting, though, Thursday night when he came into the gallery at first, he had to excuse himself because he was meeting Bulgarian friends in Fort Wayne. <laughs> and I, I thought, you, you've got friends in Fort Wayne from Bulgaria? And he did. He, he was too busy for us. So that was pretty, that was pretty eye-opening. Yeah, it was funny that uh, we met those people probably a month before they came to our place and they were friends of our friends and they came to visit and uh, we were sitting outside and having a drink and I say, where, where are you from? Where do you live? They say, well, we live in Indiana. I said, which uh, town? What what place? I say, well, it's a small town. It's uh, it's not actually very small, but... So it's a Fort Wayne, Indiana. Say, so, really? And I had a show in a month open. Yeah. So what are the, the ads? It's uh, for the ballet school that it's right uh, across. It's a round uh, building right across the museum. It's a ballet school. And he's the pianist. The company is everybody there as a ballet. Oh, how funny. What a small world. Yeah, yeah it was great. Well, I got to get out here, guys, to see this show live in person. I want to see your show, Latches Are, and I definitely want to see the rest of the work and that's on display. Each each yeah. piece looks fantastic, and I congratulate you both for an amazing um, an amazing job well done. Thank you. Thank you. It certainly was a, a job that was fun, I have to tell you. Very rewarding. Yeah, it's really nice when a plan comes together with such beautiful things. And then you used, used a comment earlier where – People had to hold their breath when they walked in the show. You could feel the, the gasping of air of people experiencing, a lot of the times, glass for the first time in this kind of caliber. And it's amazing to see and hear this is your first solo show, Latches are. Congratulations to that. That is amazing news. Yeah. There's some beautiful works in here. So, and a lot of these works are available through the gallery still, and you can go visit them in person anytime. And uh, Latches are how, how versed are your people now in glass art? Are they starting to know the artists? Are they starting to know the names? I've got to, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Grown and grown. You know, if you, if you look back, uh, I think you and I first met, maybe, Aaron, maybe we met in, uh, at the International in 2013, and the museum owned one piece of glass. Right. We're now up to 400 pieces of glass, and the 
we've had to add curators on and then the newest curator who's dealing with glass is Jenna Gilley and she calls every glass artist uh, herself to reach out and let them know that their work is in the collection and make sure that we have the right name on the piece, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. So yeah, we're, the staff is very enthusiastic about glass. A lot of that I blame on Peter Brummers though, because he came here and we all had so much fun, just like we did with Lachazar, that uh, they thought, okay, come on, more of these guys. <laughs> this is good. These glass people are fun. They, they are a lot of fun. Well, um, I want to thank you both. Thank you for joining us today. We'll be visiting again in a little bit over a month uh, to visit Steve Lynn's exhibition there virtually and have a, a great time as well during our 50th uh, event here in Michigan. So thank you all again for joining us today. You're welcome to unmute yourself. And again, this will be posted on YouTube via social media and whatnot. So feel free to share it with those who didn't see it today because I know everybody needs to see this and visit the Fort Wayne Museum of Art and see this exhibition live and in person. Right, and thank watch you. the Steve Lynn show coming up too. Right, right. right. So you're gonna right. see. I, I, I want to say to Charles that Brian has been just fantastic in staying in touch with me and getting things prepared for the installation. So uh, relay well, that message to him for me. I will, and, and I will tell you, Brian is the chief technician. He's the person that, that uh, makes sure that all the installations happen, the lighting gets done right. Uh, and Brian says to me often, he said, you know, how come painters and printmakers can't be as nice <laughs> as artists in glass <laughs> who seem to know what they talk about and they're, they're down to earth and they tell me the right details. I think I want to pass that along to everybody. It's, it's a good thing. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> all right everybody well have a great weekend and thank you again for joining me and we'll see you next week as we uh i believe we're going to be having our next ngg show with katrina weintraub have a great weekend see you soon bye bye bye, -bye. bye you guys bye. 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 Bye.